tell you what, it was big news and it broke the internet in, in a big way. Kim Kardashian's bottom. That's right. But in other news. Okay. <laughs> so the Eternals score was revealed, and we're not sure where it is at currently, mm -hmm. to be the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score for any MCU movie. Yes. Just to clarify, not comic book movies because, you know, Jonah Hex, Catwoman. So what we want to do here, first of all, if you could leave a like, that'd be great. And we're actually going to go excluding the Eternals. We're going to rank 10 to 1. One being the lowest ten of the MCU movies that are the least well received. Mm. Okay, bearing in mind, folks. Yeah, we a little, a little fun, a little fun tidbit about Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, is that uh, any review that is considered even mildly positive mm -hmm. is uh, considered fresh. Yep, counts towards the positive yep. rating, and any uh, review that is mildly negative lowers the score. Yes. So, uh, if a movie receives 100 review reviews that say this movie is pretty okay, mm. it gets a hundred percent Rotten Tomatoes That's right. rating. But if a movie would get 95 reviews that say, this is the best movie I've ever seen, and five reviews that said, I'm not into it, mm. that would get a 95%. So. Exactly. And it's all subjective, obviously. Disagree. Uh, okay. <laughs> are we <go> <laughs> these, these rankings are objective. And are we going to go into the audience scores? No, because that's just insane, people. All right, so we're going to start <laughs> at number 10. 83%, which is a great jumping off point. Mm. Like if that's, you know, the number 10 is Ant-Man. Uh, this is a review. I've got a quote for each one of these, but this one's from Alison Wilmore from BuzzFeed News who says, No other Marvel installment has felt as weighed down by its obligations to the franchise. How do you feel about that as an Ant-Man movie? Is that true, though? I mean... Do I, is that an accurate quote? How? I mean, it, <laughs> has that been accurately transcribed for the medium of the internet? Probably. But, I, like, how much of Ant-Man connects to the wider Marvel Universe? Oh, like, not a I, lot. I feel like more Ant-Man and the Wasp probably does. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. You know, but that's not even on this list. That's and I would saying. also argue that Ant-Man and the Wasp I didn't enjoy as much as that as that mm, first one. Yeah. But, um, you know, Ant-Man's fun enough. It's and that's probably why it got an 83, which is still a very high score. Paul Rudd got some abs for that. He certainly did. Call it Ab-Man. They could have called it Ab-Man. Ab-Man. Yeah. yeah. The suit's the same. You just push your, you push a little button on your sleeve and the abs it reveals your abs. It rolls up like yeah. a like a, dicky. like a tuxedo dicky bib, <laughs> yes. Uh, number nine, at 80%, we got Captain America, the first Avenger. Quote here from Kevin Ma, who says, The best bit in this year's upteenth comic book blockbuster. Whoa, this guy. Oh, oh, oh. He had goodness. no idea what he was in for. <laughs> upteenth for this year, my goodness. <laughs> uh, we're from the future, buddy, and let me tell you, it's all this now. Yeah, Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, so this is the best moment, is when Tommy Lee Jones eats some steak. And that's certainly a high point of that movie for me. Uh, I think it's only bettered by when he drinks the milk. That's true. Mm. What a combination. Mm. You know? No wonder there aren't any real men left. Yeah. Because nobody's drinking, nobody's eating a steak and washing it down with a milk anymore. Yeah. But uh, that's interesting that that, that is considered I think that's Rotten quite, Tomatoes. I think it's quite strong, that movie. I think so know? too, yeah. yeah. But it's got still, a lot of heart, that movie. An 80 is an A. So it's you true, can't yeah. really go yeah. past that, can you? It's true. It's an earlier entry in the franchise. Like, it's one of the early solo movies, and I think it's still one of the better solo movies Yeah, for me personally. And also, I think they pulled off what I probably considered before the release of the movie to be impossible. A which silly is costume. A silly costume, but also uh, a likeable Captain America. Yes. Like a Captain America that the entire world doesn't go, ugh, Captain America, yeah. as if. Like they had in the comics done it, but he wasn't an A-list character That's true, you know, yeah. on that point. Uh, at number eight, with 79%, we had, speaking of bloody captains, no, Captain this is this a B plus? Marvel. Yeah, that's a B plus. That's a high B plus. Uh, this non-linear narrative adds interest beyond your typical origin story, but it's quickly overwhelmed by the same shtick that's in all these movies, uncompelling action sequences, recycled villains, and flat direction. That's from Cassidy Olsen from the Improper Bostonian. Wow. Some of that is probably accurate. Yeah. You know, we've gone through several phases of Marvel already. Yeah. And in this, we are getting an origin story. And all origin... It's pretty late in the All day. origin story movies suffer from originitis, which is, you know... You know, you've, you've, you've got a character. Where do they get all their stuff from? Where do they get their stuff from? Yeah. Turns out an exploding spaceship. They have mentioned there that the, the villain, uh, you mm. know, it's kind of a, a, a rehashed villain. But I would argue a more accurate sort of stereotypical Marvel villain would be um, if she just fought like a palette swap version of herself. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But then she mm. got all the colour changing all the costumes. Color, yeah. So, yeah. Are they talking about Ronan? Because he's barely in it. Oh, that's true. 
Don't know. Yeah. Let's move it along. Maybe the thinking of Jude Law's performance in the movie Alfie. Yeah. You know? His dick didn't work in that movie, did it? Because he was, was the from, villain. Because he was from space. He's from space. He's from the Cree. Yeah, different atmospheres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presumably. Yeah. 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 He didn't like those Earth ladies. Nah, he didn't. Yeah. Number seven, we had it also 79%, Black Widow. This is from James from Real Reviews who says Black Widow represents the... How MC- do they spell real? E-E. Yeah, no, I knew it. Yeah, no. I could have guessed. Yeah. In retrospect, I should have guessed. Yeah. Now, now no one's going to believe me. But I would have said real, like a, like a reel of film. But you didn't. Ah! Black Widow represents... This guy can shut up and <laughs> shove it. Black Widow represents the MCU looking back when it should be moving forward. Everything about the movie seems small, even the big action set pieces. I think Black Widow would have done better if it came out after Civil War. Yes. Which is when it's set. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. I think it's, as a solo movie... I think it's one of the better ones. Mm. But again, it's a character who had died. Yes. No. So the question becomes, do we care enough about the character relationships in this movie mm. to still enjoy it, knowing we know where one of the main characters ends up dead? And I say, sure. Yeah, sure, why not? Plus, Same. we learned where her vest came from. Where was her it? Her sister gave her sister gave it to her. She yeah. said, do you want this? And she's like, yep. Uh, number six, 79%, Iron Man 3. Most of the film is one big stall, and as a result of its context, what is otherwise mostly a middling, decently entertaining picture ends up feeling far less than the sum of its parts. That's from Scott Nye from Battleship Pretension. Ah, uh, do they mention at any point the little the little groove he does to uh, to Christmas carols at the start of the movie? I've just got this particular quote here. Uh, certainly not my favourite movie in this f- entire franchise. Okay, but would you say it's your favourite movie ever? Probably actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, got yeah. Uh, it's got that little groove that I don't know if it's a little seen. groove. Yeah. yeah, no, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> he does some wing chun. Does a bit of jujitsu or something. <laughs> yeah. On that little, hey. little uh, martial arts dummy. Martial arts nerds, we know you're out there. What is it? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. You, you you probably already typed it. We did a video on this one. We'd cover the ball for caravan of garbage. But next up at number five and coming in at seventy seven percent is hot coming in hot at seventy seven percent. Is Thor. Says doesn't Thor, come, original Thor. That's right. Doesn't come close to achieving its true potential. That's from Richard uh, from the Independent Critic. I think as a movie where more like the biased critic. Mm, yes, I should have been doing little insults. You've still got time. The There's still more to go. After I'll go this. back. I'll go back afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll add them in post. Definitely. Could you just add this dumbass <laughs> to all of them? <laughs> so I think Thor. It's very quaint now, you know, and what yeah. they've done with the character and his solo yeah. movies, his last one in particular. But I think as a solo movie, it, I thought I enjoyed it at the time. Yeah. Even if it hasn't held up entirely. J- just a fun fish out of water kind of yep. uh, kind of uh, fun little thing. God's working on the earth. They're working What's around. not to love? I mean, some of it. Some of it not to love. Yeah. Number Those eyebrows, certainly. <sighs> horrifying. Number four at 76%. We're still in the bees, Mason. Mm. This is Age of Ultron. Whedon has tried to dazzle our eyes, and he does, but has forgotten about engaging our brains. Who's from this Richard review? Krauss. This dumbass. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I think Age of Ultron suffers from being very similar to the previous Avengers movie. Yeah, it tried to copy mm. plot elements. It tried to copy just There's even... There's a mindless drone army. Yeah, just even just individual shots. They were like, let's just do this again. Yeah. Mm, I strong, strong agree. Yeah. I strongly agree with this dumbass. I think if you looked at Avengers 2012 and then Age of Ultron mm-hmm. and like independently of each other, which is impossible because one came out before the other, mm. a lot of it is very on par. I would say. Yeah. Just the Avengers 2012 did it first, and it's better. Yes. <laughs> They're both pretty solid actioners, but again, yeah. like, you know, there's uh, Ultron is uh, treading a lot of ground. I agree. At number three, at 72%, is your favourite movie, Iron Man 2. This is from Deborah Ross from The Spectator, who says... Oh, do you want to read the quote before you do an insult? I can why read the quote. Don't, no, 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 no. Why don't you spectate my butt? Wow. Mm. If there's any new ideas, I failed to spot them. As did my bone marrow, which slept through most of it anyhow. What? I don't know what that means. Huh. Uh, your bone marrow was not impressed by the movie Iron Man 2. That's wild. I don't think my bone marrow has ever been impressed by a movie. Huh. Uh, but it does retread a lot of things and is not a great movie. And to be clear, it's not my favourite movie. <laughs> oh, but it is your favourite comic book movie. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. And number two. Mm-hmm. This is at 67%. So we're slipping. Yeah. This, this is a b- precipitous drop. Indeed. Uh, this is The Incredible Hulk, infinitely superior to the previous theatrical adaptation from 2003, uh, but that wasn't difficult to achieve in the slightest. Ooh, double from, burn. Yeah, I know, right? That's Mike Massey from Gone with the Twins. What? That's where he's from. Is that a website? I don't know. Oh. 
Do you want to look it up? Is it some sort of fan fiction website where the author is running away with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dan- <laughs> Danny DeVito? It's from 2008, so who really knows? Mm. Anyway, you can spectate my butt. Whoa. Yeah, that's I right. know, they're still doing things, man. Good, good on, good on them. They've got a review for The Eternals up, so, you know, Ooh. hot and fresh. Gave it a three out of ten. Oh, oh boy, these guys will say anything. I agree. Um, uh, well, okay, The Incredible Hulk. I, I do enjoy it more than Ang Lee's Hulk. Sure. You know what? It's interesting because it's not in the formula yet. Because yeah. after Iron Man and then this, they went, well, just, I think Iron Man's the tone we're going yeah, for. Yeah, let's just do this forever now. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Uh, Ang Lee's Hulk took some chances. It, it really, really did. It, it's, it's way more experimental than... Most of the stuff Marvel puts out these days, but mm. uh, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no experiments for me, it. thank You're you. Like, well, I really admire how this director really. I didn't out. say I admired it, <laughs> but you did say it was different. Mm. Very good. And at number one, obviously behind the turtles, though, at sixty-six percent is Thor: The Dark World. Jason Bailey from Flavorwire says, "Save for Hiddleston's too brief supporting turn." This is, he's in it quite a lot though, I feel. Isn't he? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is mighty forgettable stuff. By the numbers sequel to what was already the slightest and least entertaining of the Avengers components. Ouch. So that's just not like, I don't like this. It's mm. I don't like Thor and anything else Thor related. Seems biased. Yeah. I reckon probably Chris Hemsworth uh, beat him up in Bondi Beach. Maybe point. he did. Kick some sand in his face. Sounds like he deserved it. Mm, that's right. Now look, I feel like... The thing about the MCU is yep. everybody loves to rank them mm-hmm. and then make videos about people who've ranked them. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I feel like as a result, there needs to be one at the bottom. Well, yeah, yeah. People are like, oh, this one, uh, Dark World sucks, everybody says, but I think it's got some redeeming features. I think it's... As a movie, I haven't yes. seen since it came out in mm-hmm. maybe 2013. Yes. I agree. I yeah, think great. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think there's some, you know, there's some funny stuff in it. There's some decent action sequences. It's quite in it. lightweight considering the, you know, the world is at stake, as yeah. they all are in these movies. I thought it, it felt, it felt sort of remarkably free of stakes mm. and consequences. But I think that the kind of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe esque Asgard sure, they yeah. built, which is sort of this very strange mix of technology and magic, I think that looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I like those elves. Yeah. Did Christopher Eccleston like being in it? I haven't checked, but no. <laughs> he didn't. Okay, great. But remember that bit he had blood arms? Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. like, I've got blood, blood arms. I've got blood arms. That's short for <laughs> blood arms, he said. Yeah. Everybody check out my blood arms. Look, uh, this is, certainly wouldn't be my list, and I'll be interested to see other people's lists because obviously It'd be my is, list. Uh, there you go. Because it's, it's less work. Yeah, for that much more sense. It's already been done. Yeah. I think this is an objective <laughs> list. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. But yeah, look, if you go even to like number 11... Mm -hmm. At 85%, so just above Ant-Man, you've got both Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Avengers Endgame. So that's kind of where we're at, you know what I mean? mm -hmm. But look, there's a few in here which definitely I think are on on the lower end, but I don't think yet, and look, I haven't seen Eternals, to be fair, as of recording this. Mm -hmm. There's none of them where I'm like, I hated this. Yes. The worst one, I'm just like... Whatever was fine, mm, yeah, you know, sure. and I think that's incredible, really, isn't it? In all, yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, but you know, we do get paid in popcorn at the occasional press screening that we go to for these. That's true, cold yeah. popcorn. Yeah, yeah. So you can't you can't take our word for it. Anyway. And you get to the bottom of the popcorn. Yep. A little note from Kevin Feige is like, you better you better review this good. You're done. <laughs> You're finished in this town. <laughs> This gets below a Thor The Dark World 66% on Rotten Tomatoes. I swear to God, I'm going to kill everybody you know. That's what he's like. Yeah. <laughs> We've met him and that's what he's that's like. That's exactly what he's like. <laughs> Anyways, this has been a video. This video's here all the time and you might be like, I love videos, but I wish you had more podcasts as well mm. and movie commentaries and bonus podcasts in addition to your podcast, The Weekly Planet, where you talk movies and comics and TV shows. Well, guess what we do? That's true. If you head on over to Big Sandwich, all that is there and it's ad-free. But of course, you might just want to check out our podcast, The Weekly Planet, when it comes out the normal time on Monday as opposed to the Sunday at Big Sandwich. Next episode, we're actually covering The Eternals. Mm. We're going to give our thoughts. Like a couple of real dumbasses. That's right. And our feelings. Like dumbasses. Do you think feelings should come into effect when reviewing a movie? Yes. Okay, there we go. I'm not, I don't even look at the screen. You just feel it. Just feel it. In your it. bone marrow. Yeah, my marrow. Yeah, good, good. It doesn't make any sense. I'll, let's do an investigative podcast on this woman and her marrow. <laughs> Maybe Is she, she the X-Men character Marrow? Maybe she's got magic marrow, like the character Marrow. Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Subscribe if you want. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> Grab that, Jeremy, guys. We'll see you very soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.